Hi, Phil Lindsay here with Pete Magazine. We're here at Rayton Meadows Arena, the venue for, well, these two lads are fighting the debut here next Friday on the 26th on the Bank Holiday Boxing Bonanza under the tutelage of Mr. Matt Jobs. Matt Jobs. Yeah, yeah I'm looking forward to it, Phil. Um, obviously, not just mine, uh, but Tinker and Keith as well, uh, and Jimmy, who's not yet as well, massive input uh, to get these lads prepared for the debuts. Uh, everything's going well. Spawns went well, trainings uh, went fantastic. Um, looking really forward to it, getting them out, uh, letting them showcase their skills. Uh, at the end of the day, it's it's reiterating to them, stick to your boxing skills. Yeah. Um, if they stick to their boxing skills, these lads will, will do okay, you know. Uh, Connor's not yet a day, another lad who we've got on, he's, unfortunately he's at work. Uh, but Connor as well, absolutely lovely little boxer, lovely talented, nice smooth slicky skills. Um, so looking forward to him as well. So the guys you've got coming through, you've got some more guys coming through soon as well, but you're saying you've got diff obviously different, different styles as well as different sizes, but I suppose when they're working with each other in the gym, that's a chance where they can actually learn from each other and pick up some of those things up. It is. Um, obviously, the height ranges as well and weight differences, uh, deters as well. Um, how you box, how you save energy. Uh, obviously, the lighter weights can work at a lot higher rate. Um, the heavier lads not so much, so basically it's it's giving them an, an all-round game. Yeah. Um, you know, learn them how to fight on the outside, um, and there will be times where, like, doesn't matter how tall you are, or short you are, you have to fight on inside as well. Yeah, how to conserve energy. Uh, it's a little bit of adaptation. How to when to grab, how to hold properly, and all that. We get these breathers. It's it's just the little things transferring the lads' amateur skills into the professional side. You know, it's getting those breathers without actually looking like you're getting a breather, yeah, looking yeah. like you need one as well. But obviously, yeah. coming to yourself, Mark. Obviously, your first fight as a pro. Uh how long have you been preparing for this obviously because you, you fought as an abbot I was at Granger Park you were at Granger Park, uh, and then you had some time out and then you've you obviously come back and how, how long have you been preparing for this well, for your debut since just after Christmas I wasn't originally meant wasn't coming down to turn pro but uh, I just got back into it and I started loving boxing again and then uh, made the rest of history really well, that's the key. It's, it's you, you don't the old lad is, you don't play boxing. So if your heart's not fully in it, it's a dangerous sport to do because if you're not training fully and the opponent is, it's not the sort of place you want to be if you're feeling fit and tired and yeah. you've still got time to go. But well, uh, I'm definitely training properly. Properly now, training twice a day every day. I'm more than ready. I'm, I would do eight rounds, not just four. I'm super fit. I'm boxing experienced kid, so I'm not expecting an easy fight, but I know I'm more than capable of winning. I suppose it's, it's, it's all about working on what you've been working on in the gym, getting in there, seeing how well it goes, because it's one thing doing it in the gym and doing it in a fight. So I suppose it's getting, getting the fight out of the way, seeing uh, how well it goes, and then obviously getting back and then obviously building on that, I suppose. Uh, just during the fight, trying to keep me cool and composure because I, I get drawn into a fight. But I have more than enough boxing skills to just, to just box and not get involved not take stupid shots mm. like I used to in amateurs because I used to take a lot of stupid shots but I just trying to keep my composure. Was that partly in terms of fan pleasing style sort uh, of mentality? I've, well, I've sold over a hundred tickets, well around a hundred tickets I think for this so I've, I've always had a lot of people there and uh, you feel well, you need to? Uh, I just had, I like putting on a show but uh, So I expect to see a, a, a bit of a, a blend of boxing and Aggression when we see you on Friday, then. Well, I'm, I'm, aggressive. Controlled I'm, a, I'm an aggressive <laughs> fighter, but I can't let it go to my head. I just need to box a clever fight and not just lose me cool. I'm looking forward what, to watching what, that. What, one. Do you think, what do you think of Phil's shirt? Oh, it's lovely. Uh, you <laughs> you, 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 you want to see his white <laughs> one? <laughs> <laughs> my dad dressed us this morning, thankfully. And Tom Walsh, your first yeah. time out. Obviously, you don't have as much amateur experience as Mark, but. From what the, the guys are saying, I mean, Matt wouldn't take anybody on, wouldn't put you in there if you didn't see potential, that's for sure. I, I will uh, very limited amateur experience, but my amateur coach, he says, um, I know a professional coach, if you, if you fancy it, I says, well, I'll give it a go, you know. So he put us in touch with Keith, and then Keith done a couple of trials with us, brought us down uh, Matty's gym, Job's gym, and uh, I just took off, loving it. Wouldn't want to be anywhere else, to be honest. Like. And respectively, I mean, obviously, you might have different adv uh, ambitions and things. What, what, what are you actually looking for? Because obviously, this is the start of your career, the start of your pro career. 
Lord knows, I'm sure Tommy Ward, when he first turned over, he wanted to be a world champion, and that's still a possibility for him. Some people want to fight British, get the British level. I remember Ricky Hatton, when he first started, he would have been proud to be a British champion. Yes. Obviously, he went on to bigger things. But what's, what are your ambitions for going into your, your pro career? Start with you, Tom. Uh, we're seeing that belt. You know, for a start, that's, uh, that's something I'm looking forward to working towards anyways, for a start, and then just see how far I can go, all the way hopefully. Well, One of the key things is doing what the trainer tells you, and you've, you've probably watched lots of boxing yourself, where you'll see guys going in, they'll see the trainer telling them to move their head and things, and as soon as the bell goes, they're just standing there, and their head's static, and they're not moving and things, so if you listen to what Matt tells you, and you can transfer that into the fights, there's one thing in the gym, and another thing, if you can do that, and you can build on that, that belt might not be that far away, you never know. Uh, I think um, when you're touring pro, though, it's you should be at a level where, realistically, yeah, you're not instructing boxers like that. What it is is you've set your game plan in. These lads are more than capable in going out there and producing on a professional stage. Yeah. I, I've got a hundred percent confidence in them. Um, I've watched them. I've watched them spar lately. They've been in with our pros. Pro, they've been in with pros um, who. Phil and I think are going to have quite a big career as well, and they've done more than hold it on with these kids. You know, um, I've got 100% faith in these lads. Um, the boxing abilities, it's there to be shown. But it, it, once again, it's like what Neil said before the table. Um, we can all sit there and judge a fight and say he should be doing this, he should be doing that. Um, he should be sticking to this game plan, that game plan. You can put all the game plans together in the world, right? It's about doing it in that ring. Yeah. You know, and doing it under pressure. Doing it under pressure. Under getting used to it. Um, but, like I say, when you come back that corner after that three minute round and you sit down and you call me fighter down, give them good instructions um, and I believe anyway, uh, well I hope so, that the lads have got, it, got faith in me so when they come back that corner and I give these instructions, they'll go out there and they'll carry out them instructions. You know, there's, fighters have got to think of themselves as well in, in during rounds, you know, because uh, you, obviously you, you might watch your opponents over and over again, which we do, he may come in with a different exactly. game plan himself on the night, so it, you know it's all about him fighting as that can adapt. And these lads can do that. I've seen it. So, so aiming towards a British title, looking at that belt over there before. Mark, ambitions? Hey, obviously, anyone who turns pro should be aiming for as high as they can, all the belts. But you've got to be realistic and st start with like the Northern Area title, yeah. then goes up stage in the English title, British title, European. Just I'm not going to say all I'm going to win is uh, the Northern area, I'm just going to see how far I can go, because I believe I can Take that I can box and the then move on to the next one. Aye. I think that's one of the key things when, you, when you're setting goals, it's setting it's achievable not. ones, don't set them too far ahead, Aye. there, then there, then there, then there, and one at a time, but I suppose if you've, if you've got that fighting style as well, and I, I, I can just look at you, I, 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 I know he's going to bring it when he comes <laughs> in, <laughs> I can just tell, I just know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, obviously, do you still have tickets available for the? Yeah, I've obviously, you've been still, selling still a few tickets. I've sold. I think it's about a hundred. Still just collecting the money and that. So I'm not sure on the exact number yet, but I've got a canny, canny lock coming over. Uh, if anybody wants to get any tickets, how do they get in touch with you guys? Facebook yeah, just, or just Facebook or Instagram, Twitter. Just Mark Taylor. Just messages. There we go. We'll, 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 we'll get a knot down. We'll put it on the screen there, on, on, on the YouTube channel there. And same, same with yourself? Same with me, yeah. Tommy Walsh. Uh, Facebook, ringers, whatever. Tommy, <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. Tom Walsh, Mark Taylor, and the man behind them, Matt Jobs. This is Pete Magazine. See you then. Cheers, man. Cheers, bud.